So today I figured I would go ahead and do a video on servicing this air conditioner, which happens to be mine. Um, I'm currently on mat leave. Um, I think we're about halfway through that now. Um, and it's a beautiful day. So I figured I uh, probably had no opportunity, uh, sorry, I'd um, take the opportunity to pull this thing apart and clean it. Um, I installed this maybe four, three years ago, maybe now. Um, so yeah, once a year I just try to pull it apart wash it and put it back together basically so I'll run you through that oh and the also the uh the benefit of it being a beautiful day and being on mat leave yes seen in the inside of one of these things before this is basically what it looks like hey eh? pretty simple Spray, spray firm I use just with the Viper condenser cleaner. Pretty mild stuff, but mm, does a good job. letting the cleaner do its thing now like i said this thing is a pretty mild cleaner you'll never get it absolutely spotless like you still got obviously this stuff here but usually i just try to hit that with with the brush to try to get rid of some of it um i might go cut that now actually it does a pretty good job at you know getting rid of it 
These brushes are great. Just like, this is a little car detailing brush, eh? I think I picked it up from Super Cheap Auto or whatever. But soft and soft enough that it doesn't damage it. Hard enough that it gets all the crap off. With the right cleaner, obviously. That's all rinsed now. Um, you can see, I mean, like I said, I, I do this pretty much every year and you still get a bit of rust, but most of it comes up all right. Um, I'm just gonna let this rinse out, put the covers on, and I'll do a big clean of that as well. Basically just use the cleaner, go over it, use a little brush to get all the all the um, surface dust off. Um, but at the moment, it's looking all right. Um, then I'll go through, I'm gonna tighten up all the Schrader cores as well. Um, I'll tighten up the electrical connections and then I think we'll turn it back on and I'll, I'll put it, uh, we'll, we'll test the thermistors and stuff. So you can, on these controls, I think it's a PR, PAR40, I think I've got. Um, and on those ones, you can actually go into it and request a code and all that kind of stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll show you that anyway. Um, but actually while I'm thinking about it too, obviously <clears throat> I installed this, I don't know, three years ago. Um, we were doing a massive reno at the same, at the same time when we just had our first child. Um, so it's a pretty hectic time. So there are some things on this that I wish I had done differently. Um, first one being, I wish I'd put this up higher. Um, so on like a, maybe some feet or a structure, basically to keep the bottom of the condenser up off higher. So I could, it's easy to get underneath and clean under there. Um, I wish I'd done that. Um, and second thing I wish I hadn't done was, like I said, I was um, I was pretty exhausted at the time of doing this, and I <laughs> cut it wrong twice. Um, so <laughs> it's pretty impressive, actually. That I did it twice. <laughs> Please don't judge me too harshly. All right, fans back on. I'm trying to get this with one hand. See if I can do it. Whoop. There you go, that was coming loose. I'll get that earth too. Um, another thing I would have done differently too is actually not used this um, four core stuff. So, um, did a Mitzi course recently, oh, a couple of months ago, and I knew you weren't supposed to like, well, they, you know, they didn't like using this or manufacturers don't like using this. Um, I just didn't know why. It's, it's basically because you can get kind of like a, um, I think it's an induced voltage through this wire, um, which can then mess with the communication. So you'll still be receiving your, you know, your fluctuating DC voltage, but it won't be, it'll go into a comms fault because it's basically not able to communicate. Um, I think I've got a, a thing in the car about it, actually, I might go grab that. But yeah, I would have just used, um, you know, the three core and the single for the comms. Um, going forward, that's what I do now anyway. I've done a, I think I've done one or two installs since that. And I, I basically use that, um, that, uh, I, I basically don't use this anymore.
and that's that. Um, you can see it comes up pretty nicely. Um, again, like I said, you, you'll never get it perfect. Ugh. Yeah, you'll never get it perfect, but um, pretty happy. Oh, let's see, weird one there. Nope, that's not gonna work, is it? Anyway, um, basically now I'll turn this thing on. We'll let it load up. We'll go in, check the thermistors. It's been off for a while, so they should all read relatively close to ambient. Um, then we'll turn it back on. Cool, so this is my controller here. It's a um, BAR40. Um, basically, to check the thermistors, you go into the uh, service menu. So password for that, usually. I haven't changed mine. Uh, we go to check, down, oh, down here to request code. And then from here, basically you input the code that you want. I think the only one I can actually remember is the discharge thermistor. So we'll go into that. <coughs> Six degrees, I'd believe that. So, actually, the other one I do remember is the ambient temp. I sometimes use this one to uh, actually check what the temperature is outside. <laughs> I think I'm related to that. I can't remember what the other thermistors are. I'll have to go into the um, the service menu to have a look. I'll, I'll put a screen grab of that up. Oh, 17 degrees. Um, the discharge can sometimes be higher. Um, the what they'll do is they'll instead of having a sump heater, they'll run a trickle charge through the compressor um, and that trickle charge is obviously there to make sure that there is no liquid in the in the compressor which usually is displayed in the discharge um, so that's usually why you see that higher you definitely notice it a lot on the city multis as well um, so I'm not too concerned about the discharge temperature being higher what I will do now is though go through and check those other ones just to make sure that they're all reading relatively the same and then we'll turn it back on that's our liquid pipe temp this will be our two-phase pipe so suction and cooling um, discharge in heating, not too bad. They were all looking pretty good. So now we'll basically just turn this thing on. Uh, and we'll get this thing to run, eh? You can hear the compressor running now. Um, that's pretty much it for this video. I. Uh, if this was another premises or you know somewhere I hadn't been before, I would go through and just make sure obviously that it was it was running properly. Um, but I live here, so I know it works properly. <laughs> I can feel it every day. So um, yeah, apart from that, I hope you enjoyed the video.